how to sell your projects right what has happened is uh, overall the when it comes to property prices uh, they play an important role eventually when it comes to and uh, uh, finalizing the deal so whatever happens online whatever is being advertised eventually it comes to the pricing so builders uh, build, there have been various uh, statements that have been made in the last few months last few weeks when when industry holder stakeholders and government official have said that pricing needs to be dropped do you think uh, we will talk about whether this will be a, this is the financial viability uh, and how they can you know strategize how are they strategizing how they are pricing their properties now the existing inventory or the new inventory that they might look at new projects they are, might look at what are the best ways to sell their home uh, sell pro their properties on uh, in today's scenario and even if this scenario improves the coronavirus situation improves how they are willing to, uh, going to sell the properties how they are going to engage home buyers so we are joined by uh, Mr. Deepak Kapoor, who is the director of Gulshan Homes, Amit Goyal, who is CEO of India Sotibi International Reality, Alok Saraf, who is associate partner of Grand Thought in India, Govind Rai, who is co-founder of Insomniax, Blueprint and Reality X, and Mr. Pradeep Agarwal, who is founder and chairman of Signature Global. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Good Hi. afternoon, Hi. Thank you. Thank you for joining uh, us. Uh, before I come to this main topic, I will quickly ask you around how is the current situation, how you are reading the current situation, what are the challenges that you are facing and how are you re re strategizing your business model uh, around it? Pradeep, if you would like to start. Yes, of course. Uh, naturally, jo ye hai, bahut challenging प्रॉब्लेमेटिक बनती है तो उसके बाद जो निकलने वाला जो टाइम होता है उसके बाद का वो बहुत बेस्ट होता है तो मैं आने वाले टाइम में कुछ शॉर्ट टर्म की बात करें तो थोड़ा जरूर थोड़ा रिजर्वेशन है माइंड में लेकिन आफ्टर इन लॉन्ग रन मुझे लगता है कि एक बहुत बड़ा एक ऑपर्चुनिटी बनेगी पर्टिकुलर रियल एस्टेट के अंदर कुछ सेगमेंट्स के अंदर सो so, अगर लास्ट कुछ टाइम की बात करें तो कुछ चीजें इस बिफोर कोविड-19 और आफ्टर कोविड-19 में क्या जो माइंडसेट में जो चेंज एज अ डेवलपर या जो हम कस्टमर्स के साथ जो उनके डिस्कशन में जो फील कर पा रहे हैं वो चीजें जरूर मैं आपसे शेयर करूंगा एक एज अ कस्टमर आज जब कोविड से पहले की बात करें तो अगर हम इंक्वायरी डिजिटल प्लेटफार्म के थ्रू जाते थे तो वो एक इतना बड़ा प्लेटफार्म नहीं लगता था क्योंकि एक पर्सनलाइज्ड डील करना कस्टमर्स के साथ ये एक माइंडसेट है जो कन्वेंशन ऑलरेडी चलता है इंडिया में लेकिन कोविड टाइम में हम लोगों ने देखा है कि लोगों के साथ इंटरेक्ट करना बहुत आसान है जो लीड जनरेशन है उस लीड जनरेशन के बाद जो कस्टमर अगर उनसे बात कर रहे हैं तो वो प्रॉपर टाइम हमें दे रहे हैं इवन जो मॉडल हमने अपनी कंपनी में बनाया है इसमें वर्चुअल टूर सम जो कंपनी ने सॉफ्टवेयर बनाए हैं उसके थ्रू हम उन्हें कराने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं और एक सरप्राइजिंग एलिमेंट ये है कि लास्ट अगर हम दो महीने की बात करें पिछले पचास साठ दिन की तो पंद्रह ज्यादा इंक्वायरी हमारे पास कंपेयर टू जो बिफोर कोविड था उसमें इंक्रीज हो गई है और जो डील है वो भी हम ज्यादा एफिशिएंट वे में क्लोज करने की सिचुएशन में आए हैं कम पैसे लगा के यानी कम अपने एक्सपेंसेस करके दूसरा कुछ चीजें क्योंकि तो हम लोग मेजरली जो काम कर रहे हैं वो हरियाणा की अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग पॉलिसी में कर रहे हैं तो लास्ट आज जिस डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म के ऊपर जाने का ज्यादा लोगों का रुझान है हम लास्ट पांच साल से उस साइड में काफी ज्यादा काम कर रहे हैं इवन केवल हमने वहां पे देखा कि लोग कन्विंस किस लिए है कि एक प्राइस है वो राइट है साइज आपका राइट है और अगर वो आप पर भरोसा करते हैं तो कस्टमर जो है वो ऑनलाइन ही आज फ्लैट बुक करा रहा है इवन पहले भी बिफोर कोविड भी बुक कराए उसने इस पॉलिसी में और बुकिंग के बाद केवल उसे बीबीए साइन करने के लिए ऑफिस में आना पड़ रहा है उसके अलावा जितनी इंफॉर्मेशन है उसे सब ऑनलाइन अवेलेबल है 
सोशल मीडिया के थ्रू अवेलेबल है ये सारी चीजें अगर हम उसे प्रोवाइड करा पा रहे हैं तो वो कहीं ना कहीं हम लोगों पर ट्रस्ट कर पा रहा है तो ये चीज कोविड ने और ज्यादा हमें कन्विंस की है कि जो आने वाला टाइम है वो ज्यादा डिजिटली फोकस होगा कंपेयर टू बिफोर प्लीज ओके ओके दीपक इफ आई कैन कम टू यू हाउ डू यू थिंक दैट दिस हाउ डू यू रीड दिस सिचुएशन हाउ आर यू फाइंडिंग द चैलेंजेस दैट आर दैट बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द कोरोना वायरस एंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ चेंजेस दैट आर बीइंग मेड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस i say that uh, first of all good afternoon all the panelists here uh, on this topic i would say that we are passing through a very dynamic change very unprecedented situation no one of us have ever seen it so in this we are enjoying a real dynamic environment and in this dynamic environment week on week basis there's a change whatever we thought last month is not the fact in this month and going forward i will find you will find a lot of changes in coming months also week on week basis we are progressing and we are learning the new normal uh, we have really found a tough situation because all of a sudden we found that uh, our business processes our business cycle which was primarily uh, i would call it 75% offline and 25% online the ratio has gone reverse since the ratio and the percentage has gone reverse so we need to adopt to the new technologies we need to understand earlier when we used to discuss in a conference room one simple statement was there real estate is an offline activity we cannot do work from home or online but one and a half month two months of lockdown have taught all of us that it is very well possible it is manageable only thing is we need to adapt to the new normal we need to take advantage of the digital technologies available today in the space and we need to automate ourselves all our processes automate beat consumer engagement customer engagement prospects lead generation hand holding documentation to and fro all tools and system and softwares are available in the digital space only thing is we need to learn and adopt as fast as possible and you will see that the real estate industry all my developer friends have adopted very fast and most of us are now available online and we have started uh, long back the engagement activities with our consumers with our prospects earlier even from the prospect point of view also uh, the thought process was that is samay aap kaise mere se baat kar rahe hain how can you expect that i will book an apartment or a real estate product it used to be the first 15 days of the lockdown but then the engagement activities the team with the regular customer and the prospects continued and after one month today, the prospects and the customers are very much inclined to have a discussion and we are willing to close the deal so that's why i'm said we are passing through a very dynamic environment and week on week there are a lot of positive changes happening and the industry is coming back so i find initially there were all uh, dark clouds around but now we see a lot of light at the end of the tunnel and we say this too shall pass and we are very robust in terms of accommodating and adopting to the new changes and these changes you will see all the panelists are talking in today's forum okay Thank okay you. amit i will come to you uh, how do you think that uh, uh, how easy it is for builders to adopt so technology exists for a long time uh, and uh, pro- selling pro- properties online has been there for a long time but if if we uh, keep top builders aside a very few build uh, very few builders across the country have adopted these kind of technologies and have started doing this online sales how do you think is how easy it is for builders to adopt to this and how important it is for them to move online okay so good afternoon everyone uh, so ankit my answer you know to that would be that you know some of the developers as you rightly said have already started you know uh, embracing the technology in their sales and marketing practices over the last few years and some need to adopt it so it's not really you know very difficult all they need is good you know professionals managing it within their organization or or you know they may want to outsource it to professional agencies but it is need of the hour you know this is where the world is you know the headed that's as deepak also rightly said this is a new normal right so people are spending more and t- more time digitally you know millennials today taking you know they are participating in in making you know decision with their other family members in in purchase of a home and you know there is a large 35 million 
uh, NRI population, which is residing overseas. Now, out of that 35 million number, there is a there is a you know good percentage based in the U.S., in Canada, you know Singapore, and these are people again who are very very tech savvy, and and these guys you know spend a lot of time online. They you know in the U.S., 95 percent of the home search begins with the smartphone. So people, you know, go to the smartphone first and start searching for good developers, good agents, you know, good inventory, price points, comparables. So all of these things are available. There is so much information available online, and that's going to play a major role. Okay, uh, so, I will come to go. Okay, I will come to go in uh, because uh, technology and augment like augmented reality or AI or others, blockchain technology, this will play an important role when uh, when when it comes to you know online selling and online showcasing of properties and everything like that. Do you think that we are ready from technology perspective? Do you think builders are ready to adopt to this kind of technologies and how beneficial this is? Financially viable and think considering the operational costs, etc. How beneficial it is for builders to move to this kind of technologies. Chongkit, actually, it's a great question. Uh, to to your previous question, actually, I will uh, mention since we represent the other side of the story, right? Uh, you know, we have the developers. We had Mr. Amit uh, representing Swadhvi's, uh, and uh, we represent the technology and the digital part of it, right? So for us, if we had a 12 hours working before, now we have shifted to a 17 to 18 hours of working right now. So this is the phase where I'll let you know that uh, if we had planned a rollout of a technology in let's say one year, then second year, five year, everything we had re we have now replanned, and uh, two to three years have been cut, cut into the whole learning curve. So when we were developing something on virtual reality, so we knew that in 2021, 22, this is what the new model we will add. We are adding it next month now because uh, in the last two months what we have seen the biggest challenge that we have always witnessed in the past is the learning curve of technology by the developer fraternity and off late we had seen that you know very uh, talented gap you know people are entering into real estate in india they are hungry for more and more technology but this phase has made everyone realize that without technology existing and going into the future is just not possible so definitely uh, when you talk about virtual reality, what we are really seeing is a very nascent stage form of it. You know, there are many upgrades and many more interactive avenues that can be opened up and models that can be added onto the same platform, which we will see within next few months. Probably on other any other day, it would have come in 2022 and 23. Uh, by then, it would have become a norm. The second part, which you said uh, in terms of artificial intelligence, that is being used towards the data mode. So now, one thing that we have to understand, like Mr. Pradeep mentioned, that he is already witnessing a low acquisition cost right which is a reality for everyone at this point of time based on our data trends which we have ran campaigns worth already uh, you know five to six cr into this uh, on digital medium in the last uh, 40 days and what we have witnessed is the cost per lead and the cost of acquisition of the customers have drastically gone down to an extent of 50 to 70 percent reductions is what we are witnessing so wherever there is a brand and there is a credibility the eois are definitely coming yes the physical touch face by the customer is going nowhere that is going to happen but uh, definitely they are ready to block their uh, you know uh, you know homes because they know everyone is giving them a guarantee that after the lockdown they have a certain period by the time they can cancel so because of this the data that is coming in because everyone is now going digitized so there's a difference between being digitized and going digital right so everyone is going digital you know digitizing their platforms as well and they're going digital as well because of that the data that is now coming is more than anywhere else we were getting in the past so physical interfaces, the data limitations were limited. Now we are getting enough amount of data. Because of the data that is coming on board to us, the insights are amazing. And because of that, if we are, you know, if we, anyone who was prepared with, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning integration in the beginning itself, the insights are going to be much more and that we are already getting. And that's the reason because of this data interface, we are able to bring down the customer equation cost even lower than the past. Uh, the last part that we said in terms of the blockchain technologies, uh, I believe for India, there are still few norms uh, that government is uh, you know, thinking about and the real execution of it. Blockchain in prop tech and in real estate space, for sure, if I have to put my money, I will definitely put on it. It has been marred by some bad reputation in the past, but going forward, trust me on that, blockchain is uh, going to be a way forward. Maybe 2020 is not the year we are going to be talking about it a lot, but uh, 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 you, know, you can be rest assured in US and other countries uh, which are moving a little ahead in the pace with us in terms of technology. Uh, real estate already blockchain is being adopted in a very big uh, you know way because of the encryptions because of the data security because of the transactions being done
But yeah, for 2020, blockchain is not what we are going to be talking. But yeah, augmented reality and virtual, uh, you know, reality, these are already in. What what had to happen in 2023, we are already using it 2020 now. So yeah, that's a new future we are talking about. Alok, I will come to you. Uh, in, in order to sell the properties, the first thing is to gain the home buyer's trust. So uh, do you think that these technologies, you know, social media and all uh, augmented reality and everything, do you think that these technologies, even if builders use it, they will be able to gain the home buyer's trust? Do you think that uh, buyers are ready to you interact with this kind of technologies? And even in the builders and stakeholders perspective, do you think the employees and everything, are they well enough, are they trained well enough to be ready for these kind of changes yeah uh, so thanks uh, Git, and uh, good afternoon everyone uh, i think that's a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting question um, uh, whether trust through digital engagement can be built uh, in my view i think uh, that is the way forward i think the internet is a great way to provide like a democracy where there's a symmetry of information that is available to everyone uh, and uh, in, uh, and that digital engagement, be it social media, be it uh, engagement through a chatbot, using artificial intelligence, etc. I think uh, definitely, I think that's a great way to build trust. Uh, uh, I think historically, I think I think some of the one, of, I think one of the panel member concluded uh, in the last call, in the last panel discussion, that I think real estate has always been the punching bag. It has been painted. All players have been painted with the same brush. And that is not something very new. When we speak to some of our clients, uh, I think uh, they keep complaining. They are they have tried their best by associating themselves with uh, credible organizations like an Aritco or Credai. But unfortunately, I think those are uh, a club. I will use a word, sorry, for a better lack of words. It's a club of developers. Uh, there's hardly any interaction with the actual buyers uh, through that through those associations or uh, uh, you know. Uh, institutions. Uh, so I think the, obviously Kredai or Naretko or organizations like that, very similar to that, have played a big role in bringing back some trust and that's why we see that uh, there are customers who keep coming back to a particular uh, brand or, or developer. Uh, but still I think uh, for a large part of developer, uh, I think this is still this is still a long way to go in terms of building that required level of trust. Uh, and without trust, I think uh, digital marketing is not going to be successful at all, irrespective of however fancy campaign you may design or uh, uh, you may have a great engagement, uh, great product, but without trust, I don't think people will end up either, even blocking their apartment. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, Ankit, I clearly agree that this is a great opportunity, uh, to be honest, for most of the developers to kind of uh, come out of the stigma that real estate is not something uh, which is very transparent, open. And for example, I I can just tell you a few instances like uh, there if if a customer happens to uh, uh, have an opportunity to buy a particular inventory, I think most of the time because that may be a premium inventory, uh, either the sales uh, person or representative of the developer will say it's already sold or blocked because they don't want to sell it at that point of time. I think even small things like that create a you know mistrust. Uh, so I think the, a democracy has to be provided. I think of online marketing and digital marketing is a great way to start. I think uh, showing them that it's like a like booking your ticket on book my show. You really know which are the seats which are available, and basis that you choose which seats you want to book. I think same kind of uh, I think just to start. This is a very very basic example I gave. There are multifold uh, many examples. Uh, I think with Rera coming in. Uh, again, it's a great opportunity demonstrating or displaying your era number has become a norm of late. I think going forward, there are multi, uh, many elements uh, to real estate, be it uh, construction progress, uh, be it, uh, uh, you know, pro approval process uh, in terms of occupancy certificate, wherever local authorities, whatever approvals are required, if those can be displayed uh, digitally, there could be more engagement, I think, using chatbots, right? Uh, because people are in the Indian market, I think a lot of NRA customers, we have a very healthy population living outside India in different time zones. I think technology will definitely play a big role where we use smart uh, AI driven chatbot to interact with them and to provide all the necessary information because sometimes the frontline executive or the call center employees, uh, which typically operate some of the developers have started using, 
uh, not don't have the required information. So, uh, in terms of employee, what you mentioned, I think definitely a training is going to be a big element, and uh, I think uh, maybe we maybe maybe a significant reduction of uh, employees, but uh, but much more informed employee who are interacting with the customer. Okay, uh, hmm. Pradeep and Deepak, I will put you on spot. Uh, there have been uh, uh, in the last few weeks there have been statement by stakeholder and government officials both that prices need to be reduced by whom uh, by the builders. Now they wanted to. This will have. They think that this will drive the real estate market and this will make uh, buyers to buy more properties. But I have discussed this in the previous sessions also. But I will ask your views also on it. Do you think that this is financially viable for? Builders to you know reduce prices. Do you think that uh, uh, this can be done, and uh, this is a possibility going forward, even if the lockdown extends? So can I? So uh, first of all, is uh, is uh, question se pehle main Alok ji ka ek uh, aur cheez pe dis bolna chahunga ki rightly mention ki Alok ji ne kaha ki trust jo hai, wo ऑनलाइन सेल्स के लिए डिजिटल सेल्स के लिए बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है क्योंकि ये एक ऐसा कोई प्रोडक्ट नहीं है जो कंज्यूमेबल है या कुछ बहुत कम अमाउंट का है जिसके ऊपर वो ट्रस्ट कर ले पूरी की पूरी लाइफ के अंदर वो वन टाइम ये एक इवेंट है जो वो करता है और इतनी जो उसकी हार्ड एंड मनी है वो उसे ई से पे करता है और उस वक्त अगर उसे उसका घर नहीं मिलता तो बहुत एक तो इसके लिए मुझे लगता है कि जो जितने भी डेवलपर्स हैं नेचुरली उनके लिए आफ्टर रेरा तो वैसे ही बहुत सारी सर्टन कंडीशंस उसके अंदर हो गई हैं लेकिन एज ए डेवलपर उसे खुद आगे आना पड़ेगा हर चीज को बहुत ट्रांसपेरेंट मैनर के अंदर वन बाय वन जो कस्टमर को बताना पड़ेगा इवन दो उसको उस चीज की नॉलेज है या नहीं है आपको अपने आप से आगे जाना पड़ेगा कि ये ये इसकी चीजें हैं लाइक like जैसे मैंने अभी पहले भी कहा कि आज जो अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग पॉलिसी हरियाणा की उसके अंदर लास्ट पांच साल से हम ऑनलाइन जो सेल्स का मॉडल है हमने चलाया हुआ है एक बड़ी सिंपल सी चीज है आज कोई भी पर्सन हमारी वेबसाइट पे जाता है उसको एक प्राइस होता है फिक्स प्राइस है क्योंकि गवर्नमेंट की पॉलिसी है वो जो प्राइस है वो रशनिंग है गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से जो भी उसके अंदर उसे समझ में आता है यूनिट उसके लिए वो क्लिक करता है पूरे के पूरे प्रोसेस को पूरा करता है एक एफिडेविट देता है जो गवर्नमेंट का गाइडलाइन है उसके बाद उसे ऑफिस आने की नीड है सिर्फ बीबीए के टाइम पे उससे पहले अगर उसका अलॉट होता है लॉटरी में तो उसको इंफॉर्मेशन चली जाती है अदरवाइज का पैसा उसको वापस चला जाता है उसके बाद हर मंथ जितनी भी कंस्ट्रक्शन हमने की है सोशल मीडिया पे हर प्रोजेक्ट वाइज हम उसे अपडेट करते हैं ताकि उस पर्सन को जिसमें उसने पैसा लगाया है उसे पता हो कि इसकी कितनी कितना इसको कंस्ट्रक्ट किया अगर कोई कंस्ट्रक्शन में डिले होता है तो इमीडिएट उसके ऊपर ही सोशल मीडिया पे ही लिखता है कि मेरे टावर बन नहीं पाए हैं या क्या दिक्कत है मुझे बताई जाए तो हमारी टीम जो है वो उनके साथ इंटरेक्ट करती है तो इतना ट्रांसपेरेंट होना पड़ेगा और उस फियर को भी छोड़ना पड़ेगा कि क्या कस्टमर हमें कहने वाला है या सोशल मीडिया पर आपकी कितनी पिटाई होने वाली है इन सारे फियर से बचना यानी उसका कोई तरीका नहीं आपको सामने जाना पड़ेगा और वही ट्रस्ट बनाता है आपको क्योंकि अल्टीमेट जो आप कस्टमर से उसके हार्डन मनी ले रहे हैं उसके बदले में उसका घर देना बहुत जरूरी है दूसरा आपने प्राइस के लिए कहा कि बहुत सारे लेवल्स पे जो एक प्राइस का वो आ रहा है कि क्या डिडक्शन होना चाहिए देखिए मेरा ये मानना है कि ऑलरेडी जो रियल एस्टेट है वो एक अपने ऑन ट्रबल से जूझ रहा है इस टाइम अगर हम रेडी इन्वेंट्री की बात करें तो रेडी जो रेडी टू मूव इन इन्वेंट्री वो बहुत ज्यादा नहीं है मतलब सत्तर अस्सी हजार की इन्वेंट्री अगर हम कहें तो रेडी टू मूव इन की है बाकी स्टॉल प्रोजेक्ट के अंदर है अगर इस वक्त हम जो प्राइस है रॉ मटेरियल्स हैं उनकी बात करें तो उनके प्राइस कहीं भी डाउन नहीं है तो ऐसे में कैसे पॉसिबल है कि प्राइस को और ज्यादा गिराना हाँ ऐसे प्राइस जो ऐसी चीजें जो लग्जरी हैं थोड़ा जहां पे माल थोड़ा इन्वेंटरी बिकने में दिक्कत है वहां प्राइस का डिडक्शन टेम्परेरी बेसिस पे मिल सकता है लेकिन जहां पर प्राइस कम है ऑलरेडी अफोर्डेबल है मुझे नहीं लगता कि वहां पर कोई भी प्राइस डिडक्शन की अभी कोई होप है और इवन आने वाले टाइम में आज भी एक अपॉर्चुनिटी है इवन द आप 2013, 14 या 15 की बात करें लास्ट पांच साल में प्राइजेस इंक्रीज नहीं हुए हैं तो ये ऑलरेडी प्राइस जो है वो कम है अगर हम दूसरे एंगल से देखें तो मुझे ऐसा कुछ नहीं लगता है कि कोई ऑल आउट सडन कोई प्राइस की 
दस पंद्रह बीस पॉइंट का कोई डाउन जाने वाला इशू है हाँ कुछ जो डेवलपर जो प्रेशर में होंगे या जिनके पास आज निकलने का कोई मॉडल नहीं है या लिक्विडिटी क्रंच है तो वो जरूर इस वे को बना सकते हैं अदरवाइज बहुत प्रॉब्लमेटिक है कि आज किसी नए प्रोजेक्ट को लेना कम प्राइस के ऊपर इसे लॉन्च करना आई थिंक से मुझे नहीं लगता कि ये पॉसिबल है प्लीज दीपक सेम क्वेश्चन बट आई विल एड जस्ट वन मोर पॉइंट टू इट गवर्नमेंट म्यूनिसपल कॉर्पोरेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटीज दे माइट लुक एट इंक्रीजिंग स्टैम्प ड्यूटी एट रजिस्ट्रेशन चार्जेस कंसिडरिंग दैट दे आर ऑल्सो फेसिंग द रिवेन्यू लॉस राइट सो इन सच ए सिचुएशन इफ ministries and stakeholders both are saying that prices must be reduced and at the same point government are also looking at increasing their own uh, taxes and others do you think that builders uh, will be able to you know uh, face this financially well ankit uh, thank you very much for adding the last component of comment uh, introduction uh, i would say my take would be you see how government is behaving if they are increasing the cost of inputs the simple math says the product cost will go up will not go down the basic mathematics says if the diesel oil price is going up how can it reduce because it affects each and every commodity so all the raw material cost is going to go up because every state has increased the price of diesel and oil so there is no question of reduction in pricing i would put it into the two ways but otherwise uh, my request to the, uh, your panel here uh, is that to government machinery you need to inject liquidity into the system to ensure that all the businesses survive today that is a single point agenda vis-a-vis -vis the business community be it a developer community be it manufacturing be it service industry fmcg or textile we need to look at as a holistic approach it cannot be you and me approach that i will order you this and you have to do this today we have to sit on the same table and uh, not physically maintaining the social distancing of course through webinars and we need to ensure that collaboratively we have to take a call that how to influx how to improve liquidity into the market and make the businesses running and since we are talking about real estate same is true in real estate as well so the impact of further imp uh, increase in stamp duty will be counterproductive in real estate industry so this is what is my answer to the first part second part pricing i say pricing i divide into three segments i say a product price around 6000 rupees square foot so any product category which is lower than 6000 rupees it is practically impossible to lower down any price component any product which is beyond 6000 and goes up to there are certain markets where it has been uh marketed at 10000 rupees 15000 rupees 20000 rupees per square foot if the institution that organization feels that there is a scope for reduction they would they might do it depending upon the kind of cash flows they require they can depending upon the kind of sales velocity they are looking out for but we cannot generalize it per se second factor i say that in today's world what is most important is what is price i see i see the price as a value proposition if you can offer your prospect your customer a value proposition the customer having a trust and a value proposition is willing to pay you whatever you demand from the customer so the price parity if you offer a very transparent very open value proposition to the customer he accepts or she accepts the price the third part of it is uh, mentioned in the last uh, question is trust absolutely our industry has been reeling through lot of changes in the last 5 years introduction of lot of legislation and all that but today rera is a reality so post rera i think there is no question there is a trust deficit why because any real estate developer cannot market a product unless it is rera registered so since it is rera registered all the documentation needs to be uploaded submitted to rera rera initially used to give a registration certificate Uh, without looking into the documentation but they also realize it so they also take a time of 30 days to 45 days uh, time to scrutinize each and every document to verify from the various agencies whether all the documents uploaded by the developer are true and factual so only then once they are sure 100% they provide you a rera registration number so since rera registration number is a big aspect as far as the trust is concerned so today the consumer have to understand that if the project is rera registered that means all the due diligence has been taken care by the government authorities 
and now uh, coming about the transparency and the consumer confidence i must tell you the rera there's a provision every three months we need to upload what is our construction status what inventory has been sold what is not been sold if you drop down the rera window you'll find so much of transparency has been brought in in this indian real estate market through rera which is fantastic which is a very good thing to uh, go forward so my take on these question is this thank you ankit uh, uh, can i come uh, in yeah, ankit can yeah. i just make couple of points i think before we move to the next question again on the trust factor i think sure. uh, I, i think as mr kapoor said i think uh, real estate uh, uh, regulation act has really made a lot of difference but i strongly believe for example like mutual fund industry i think people we have seen that sip flow in last couple of years have increased significantly so there are multiple dimensions to it i think there was a very effective marketing campaign which was done as a collaborative manner where all of the mutual funds uh, effectively funded a common campaign mutual fund has sahi right for you uh, so that kind of campaign like a lot of people are not still aware what is rera i think rera has been a talk of the town more for developers i think people uh, developers have met online offline and discussed and debated sliced diced whatever and uh, all of those information are published i think people as a large as a cons- uh, customer community i have not seen any digital campaign being run uh, where people are made aware that what rera really is and and how effective it is because may, uh, actually we have only read in the media uh, in a, through the media that effectively many states have really diluted the rera and it is it has been made more beneficial to some of the uh, developers in each uh, state i think there has to be a collective campaign either led by kredai uh, or or naredco organizations like them where everybody has to fund and that is a great way to kind of change or build up that trust right uh, which is essential for all players it is it is uh, a player agnostic to be honest i will come to you uh, both pradeep yes. and uh, deepak talked about the luxury segment or the premium segment that is there do you think that uh, that particular segment how do you think that that particular segment has been impacted first second is do you think that there is a possibility of price correction in this particular segment and third is if even if the prices are not reduced or prices are reduced how do you think that the builders who are in in this particular segment or uh, stakeholders who are in this particular segment should uh, you know look at selling their properties look at uh, interactive with, with home buyers how do they go about it because the buyers for these are very niche and uh, they have to inter- they interact and behave very differently so what is your take on this particular segment sure so ankit happy to answer all the three questions so the first one is luxury luxury segment impact you see luxury buyers over the last few years have been buying these assets you know only for the self use so the investor driven demand has already dried up quite a lot in the last 3 4 5 years and when it comes to end use for end use i think post covid people realize that they need you know more amenities more modern homes larger places you know a space for their wellness within the house be it a, you know small gymnasium or a yoga room and likewise you know more and more people in the luxury segment over the last 3 4 5 weeks that we engage you know our clients they are talking about you know having a work from home situation you know going forward more and more often so having a space which is dedicated for you know let's say home office so so far most people were talking about you know having four five six large bedrooms and you know maybe a lab pool and you know home theater but going forward things like wellness as i said uh, home office that's going to be you know also added in the space so that's that's one bit of it other thing is demand of luxury segment so demand is going to be you know impacted negatively because of some job cuts salary cuts ease of reductions so price of shares you know reduced significantly for most of the large companies but the positive side is interest rate softening so some of the clients who borrow money you know for them it's going to be a positive impact the second thing is there is some price rationalization more so in the luxury segment so when we speak to our offices in the you know overseas markets us canada uk there is a price correction and most people are talking uh, you know a number which is more like 20% in terms of price drop so so there are you know apartments which are in the market in new york city in manhattan and they are you know there the price is dropped by 20% same is the case in london dubai some of the other markets Uh, you see the other thing as i said in terms of you know uh, driving the demand uh, 
larger spaces you know people sitting in home or locked up in their house for eight weeks ten weeks they realize they need to upgrade they need to move in a new house you know they may have a large portfolio of assets which is which is you know more financial assets or investable real estate but the house that they are living in is not really something that you know match their own stature so that's going to drive the demand the second question is price cut which i think i've answered as part of the first one there is you know a lot of inventory with these large investors within their family offices within their portfolios which they invested in just as investment and that inventory is now you know in the market so most of these investors or large clients in the luxury segment more so they are looking for consolidating their portfolio so they want to keep you know the asset that they use and rest of the assets you know sell off so that is going to put some pressure on the price more so in the luxury segment so that impact may not be more on the mid and the affordable segments so i fully echo you know pradeep ji's and gulshan ji's sentiment deepak ji's sentiments but at the same time you know if we pick up you know any of the projects in south delhi gurgaon let's say you know camellias so there are plenty of units which are sitting with the investors so those investors when those units come into the market you know that's going to really impact the pricing quite a lot okay okay uh, uh, the third thing is how to attract the buyers hmm. in terms of you know how to attract buyers one needs to be you know i think building trust is the key so how do you build trust by bringing more transparency more best practices you know so so having the right team which is fully trained so a lot of developers you know having large sales teams large marketing teams if we look at globally most of the developers largest of the developers with billions of dollars of inventories they have very small sales and marketing team and they outsource it to agencies global agencies global brands professionals who can do this you know very very efficiently and effectively and not just within that micro market but also you know globally so i mean you know buyers are coming from across the globe especially for indian developers as i mentioned about the nri population nris come and buy for their family members for their parents you know for their retirement home so so you need to you know have that outreach in a very professional way systematic way uh, by building the trust you know doing the right communication in the right manner and alok made a very good point that you know they need to be more much more transparent so when they are putting their you know inventory pricing payment plan it needs to be as transparent as possible so developers you know some of them you know have been following rera guidelines religiously but some have not been following as religiously so i think that's something that again needs to be the way forward so so you know all in all people will continue to buy real estate you know the demand is going to remain there people will need larger homes and upgradation it's only about you know uh, uh, looking at the end user going forward okay govin i will come to you uh, because across the board it has been uh, the talk is about the transparency and uh, trust factor of, of home buyers do you think that technology when we use these technologies and builders adapt to this kind of technologies 3d technologies and augmented uh, reality one to one interactions engaging with home buyers on social media do you think that this is this kind of technologies if used by the buyer, builders will eventually lead to gaining more trust or do you think that when it comes to physical implementation of this uh, that if for instance i will take an example if uh, builder is showcasing their properties uh, on 3d technology do you think that eventual sales of these properties is a possibility uh, using this and do you think buyers would be uh, trustworthy enough to look at this on 3d technology and then buy it directly think uh, i believe uh, already on the forum this has been established uh, that the trust factor is going to play important role and uh, families over a period of time now the biggest change that we may see is in the, in terms of the product planning so are, are there going to be 2.5 bhks or 3.5 bhks or 1.5 bhks going to come the 0.5 factor would be for work from home scenarios or not because one thing is certain till the time the vaccines are not there the summer uh, scenario is going to be like this where some part efficiency is going to be from home so people's aspirations are going to go high that those who are in 1 bhk they'll want 2 bhk those who want 2 bhk they'll want 3 bhk so there is a need and there is a demand that is going to be there and the home among all the things one medicine that we really had in this whole outbreak was home so demand is there now the customers have to trust somebody so now question comes on the developer side what do they have to do so 
it is very important that you know every brand has been built for sure but the brand projection lies into the hands of their people right in terms of those who are interacting with those customers the channel partners also uh, they are going to play a important role their whole role has been changed one of the forums i was attending the brokers are asking that you know in eoi format how do we get our brokerages right they will have to change their format also but as i said now the biggest uh, task is just not going to be about the brand and the product also the people who are going to be interacting because a lot of times when virtual walkthroughs are happening for a normal case scenario we knew the call centers and the pre sales team will they do their job eventually customer will come to the site we will have multiple uh, uh, you know criteria webcams and everything is on cameras being put to see what is happening i can overview as an owner you know we have a few owners here as a owner they can see what is going on they can improvise things but in the virtual scenario how do we keep a tap you know uh, there were calls being recorded there were 10 minutes call now now the virtual calls being recorded are one hour calls now so what is the technology to tap that are you going to be doing the virtual scanners are you going to keep the scanners to see the interaction to see the points being uh, talked about like a facebook or a youtube uses right uh, you know in the copyright uh, you know uh, format of a copyright uh, breaches they use those uh, technologies as well so now the biggest challenge lies into the hands of developers in terms of uh, the trust they build the brand but the same projection has to happen via the team now the team how are they interacting what is the knowledge that they are sharing and one more thing one of the interesting formats or the models that developers in the last 40 days we have interacted that they are ready to put it out is the inventory management so previously they were okay let customers go and check it on the era it is there uh, not every was everything was updated every day right it is three months thing Uh, so they were not bothered but now in this phase they are ready to take that step they are ready to take that plunge uh, most of the developers were in touch with they are not just giving a platform for virtual walkthroughs but they want to give their customers a seamless experience where they are just taking the virtual walkthroughs they are even visiting in an interactive format the brochures and then they want to showcase their inventory which is available that has to be routed at the back end with the crm and erp so most of the time they have to be truth uh you know you have to project out there and eventually if the person is giving an eoi they want to put the payment gateway there on the same interface itself so that interface is no more just about virtual uh, you know runway or virtual walk through but it is a seamless inter- uh, in in uh, you know setup till the time the uh, payments are not getting done for the eoi so definitely in terms of the transparency developers have taken their first step uh, customers definitely are going to needing uh, they will need so every inventory which is ready position or is going to into the position for the next 6 8 months i believe they are seeing more tractions for sure because people are definitely going to be okay that you know if they can make a shift if they had the money they were already thinking so they would want to take the plunge so ready inventory and 6 to 8 months whatever that is ready people would want to take the plunge and that's a kind of traction we have seen in the last few days uh, we have seen multiple amount of eois being generated across india not just you know one or two developers people are taking eoi the story of eois is truth that talks about the demand right so definitely the demand is there trust factor developers are putting forward their brands that they have built over a period of time rera has put everybody on the same platform that uh, everything that is being promised they are going to be watching for it so developers have this as an advantage as well now it is only about what are they doing how are they sell, uh, you know training their teams uh, because pre sales roles are now going to be very different as alok was talking about it is going to be a new game altogether your typical 20000 25000 call center guys are not going to suffice because they do not have the bandwidth to explain a customer virtually what your dream home is going to look like customers previously also wanted to talk to their homes they wanted to talk the every housewife wanted to talk to their kitchen before buying it they would want to do it again right they will continue doing it virtually but how smartly how interactively and uh, how transparently are we projecting each and everything is going to define the next level of change that we are going to be witnessing at least in india okay okay so last three points before we open it for question, live questions pradeep first i would like to ask you uh, practical when it comes to practical implementation do you think it is builders would like to know across india do you think this is practically possible if we if builders give uh, most of their budget to online advertising and online sales and 3d technologies if they move their operational cost to these segments do you think that they can be financially viable i've asked this question before but i will ask you also do you think this is fine actually viable for them they can make uh, not if not profit can they be at least be at a no profit no loss basis do you think that uh, this is a possibility or physical sales will be the only way that uh, builders will eventually make money so uh, ankit actually jo mindset hai jo developer ka jo ek previous raha hai i think uh, 
आज टैक्स से भी होना ही पड़ेगा ये कंपल्शन हो चुकी है आप ये मान के चलिए कोई चीजें हैं आज स्मार्टफोन जब तक नहीं था जब तक ठीक है हम लोग नाइनटीन में वो नो, कौन सा नोकिया का या दूसरा वो सैमसंग का फोन होता था बड़ा सा और आज 2020 में हम बात करें तो बिल्कुल डिफरेंट सेनेरियो हो चुका है तो आई थिंक सो माइंडसेट बिल्कुल चेंज है आज जो डेवलपर फर्टिलिटी है वो अभी तक इस चीज को एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर पाई थी एक्सेप्ट सम जो बिग ब्रांड्स हैं उनको छोड़ दे तो कि जो नीचे जो 80 परसेंट डेवलपर्स हैं उन लोगों को समझ में नहीं आता था कि ये जो टेक्नोलॉजी टीम के ऊपर इन्वेस्टमेंट करना या जैसे गोविंद ने कहा कि एक इन्वेस्टमेंट है उसके ऊपर और वो लगाना पड़ेगा आज हम जब ऑफिस बनाते हैं तो उसके अंदर सारी चीजें हम लगाते हैं कि ऐसा ऑफिस होना चाहिए ये ये चीजें आज हमारे लिए टेक्नोलॉजी जो है वो मस्ट हो गई है बाकी जो ऑफिस की लग्जरी है वो शायद हम लेसर करके चल ले चलेगा बाकी जितनी चीजें जो हम कस्टमर के साथ इंटरेक्शन कर सकते हैं इवन हम उसे कैसे कंफर्टेबल जोन में ले जा सकते हैं कि जो हम घर उसे वर्चुअल टूर के थ्रू दिखा रहे हैं तो हम उसे कैसे ये फील करा सकते हैं कि ये बिल्कुल ऐसे है जैसे वो साइट पे जाए क्योंकि साइट पे अगर हम बात करें तो साइट पे सिर्फ जमीन है वहां पे कुछ नहीं है लैंड है इससे ज्यादा आज की डेट में तो वो सिर्फ अल्टीमेट जो मॉडल रखा है या जो वॉक थ्रू है या जो भी हमारे और अदर देन जो हमारी सेल्स टीम है वो ही कन्विंस करती है तो हम किस तरह से उसको कन्विंस कर पाए ये हमें अपनी टेक्नोलॉजी टीम के साथ बैठना पड़ेगा जो हमारे जो टेक्नोलॉजी के जो जो भी हमारी सप्लायर्स हैं उनके साथ बैठना पड़ेगा और जो आज की नीड है वो हमें बतानी पड़ेगी और उस पर इन्वेस्टमेंट करना पड़ेगा और ये लॉन्ग टर्म वे में यही चलने वाला है आज अगर हम ए, मैं एक थोड़ा सा पुरानी बात कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि मैं फाइनेंशियल मार्केट को ही बिलोंग करता हूँ शेयर मार्केट को नाइनटीन से पहले शेयर मार्केट के अंदर अगर आपने कभी देखा हो तो पहले मैनुअली ट्रेडिंग होती थी अंदर बी में एन में हाथ से चोपड़ी पे लिखते थे ये ट्रेडिंग तो उसके बाद 1995 पे जब कंप्यूटर ट्रेडिंग आई तो सबने कहा ये क्या ट्रेडिंग है बेकार हो गया अब अब कौन जब सामने हमने रेटिंग है तो कैसा ट्रेडिंग चलेगा आज 2020 में 20 लाख करोड़ रुपए पर डे का ट्रेडिंग है तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि ये आने वाले टाइम में जो लोग इस टेक्नोलॉजी के ऊपर पैसा खर्चेंगे अपने कस्टमर के साथ ट्रांसपेरेंट बनेंगे वो लोग आने वाले पांच साल में बहुत बड़े प्लेटफॉर्म के साथ काम कर रहे होंगे इवन बहुत बड़ी कंपनीज बनेंगी उनके साथ जो बड़े फाइनेंशियल जो इंस्टीट्यूशन से वो भी जुड़ना चाहेंगे इवन जो कस्टमर है वो भी उन्हीं लोगों के साथ काम काम करना चाहेगा तो मुझे लगता है आज की डेट में जितने डेवलपर्स हैं बजाय लग्जरी ऑफिस बनाने के बजाय अपनी ऐसी चीजों पे बड़े बड़े एडवर्टाइजमेंट पे पैसे खर्चने के कि एक एक जैकेट दें उसके अंदर वो इतना बड़ा बड़ा पैसा खर्चे उसकी बजाय टेक्नोलॉजी के ऊपर इन्वेस्टमेंट करें तो मुझे लग रहा है शायद वो ज्यादा फ्रूटफुल Okay, Deepak. I will come to you. Uh, uh, another question that builders would like to know across uh, in the across the country is how are you dealing with the increasing operational cost? So we have heard news that cement prices are increasing. We have heard news of construction laborers that are uh, moving to their native places. How, because this will eventually determine whether how you uh, price your properties. So because if their operational cost increases, the overall eventual cost of properties will have to be increased in order to meet the uh minimum criteria of profit or uh, financial viability so how you are dealing with this kind of situations how, how is strategizing your uh, operational and uh, property cost See, what has happened is currently <coughs> the government has given us permission to start construction so we have started mobilizing men material machinery by taking care of all the safety measures as well uh what is a new normal is that cost of uh, acquisition or cost of acquiring the raw material has increased but as i started my discussion that we are in a very dynamic environment every week 10 days the situation is changing so let us see how things evolve and we are left with no other option but to adapt ourselves to the new realities that is the way forward so we need to be very flexible very adaptive very quick decision maker a good actionability and now as far as the cost increases concerned of course we are looking at it because today's market is not allowing us to increase the price of the product but the cost component or input cost is going on very high so people who are working already on the very meager margins which by and large all the developer community is enjoying uh, today so it is very difficult to take it forward that's why we've been talking to the government to intervene and ensure that at least uh, for last mile funding or people uh, Uh, developers project who are stuck up they need to become a big brother and provide liquidity so that they see the ray of light they should complete that unfinished product 
more or less what we see is in a life cycle of a real estate product ranging from three to five years there are different stages starting from the land as uh, said but there are certain mid-level uh, some projects under construction with structures only somebody is there with the finishing somebody is likely to offer possession in uh, coming three months to six months time so there are different stages of projects so it will all depend at what stage what raw material is required and what are the cost components of it but having said that if you have increased the basic commodity which is impacting every industry which is the oil so the prices are going to go up so it is a difficult fall call for all the real estate developer to cope up with without increasing the price of the product which in today's uh, seems very impossible okay okay alok uh, very briefly last point uh, how do you think uh, we have talked about the builders we have not talked about the other stakeholders brokers real estate agents ipcs how do you think they need to adopt to this kind of new changes how do you think that they are using these technologies in order to uh, uh, in order to you know benefit from uh, this situation or uh, in order to you know do com- some kind of uh, economic activity in during this t- situation what are the changes that they are going through uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a very valid question, and thanks for asking. I think in the previous panel, I think one of the uh, uh, developers mentioned that obviously, I think uh, the the ecosystem effectively has adopted the technology way faster than some of the developers. For example, many channel partners and uh, real estate agents are taking the help of uh, technology. They are uh, sending mass emailers. They are effectively taking the help of some of the uh, you know, other technology platform, uh, listing platform where they're listing all the properties. So I think, I think to be honest with you, I think they are ready to integrate themselves to, to the developers as, as soon as they adopt the new technology. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, the channel partner and the real estate agents will have a lar- very, very large role and more effective role going forward to kind of take, take the propaganda of building that trust. They are going to be a very, very important agent uh, they are after. So because at the end of the day, uh, they are the kind of customers relationship they carry with them. I think uh, it's it's it is beyond one developer. They are catering to multiple developers, uh, not really an exclusive partner with one developer. Uh, so from that perspective, I think there is some level of trust which already exists with them, and uh, this is a great opportunity for them to build on that. The other point which I like to bring on and add here that they also have to come out uh, with a very innovative. Uh, way to commoditize. I think in, in the previous panel, and somebody mentioned that effectively, and you asked that FMCG effectively sold uh, like a commodity. Uh, the reason, and and it, and uh, I think from a offline to online behavior change has happened significantly in the last five to ten years, thanks to e-commerce companies. Right? They have spent huge amount of money, in a huge amount of losses, to change that behavior. Uh, so then, I think. Uh, I clearly believe that same kind of commodity with a fractional ownership. Uh, we have seen some startups or some even builders uh, toying with the idea of uh, introducing fractional ownership for commercial properties. Uh, with work from home becoming the new normal, obviously, for example, if I own a 3 BHK, I have a family, I because of lockdown, I was compelled to use one room and block everybody out and uh, use that as a home office, but that is not going to work if this becomes a new normal going forward. So there will be some amount of rebalancing which will happen and effectively i think two three people in the same society uh, so there will be one block for example there are multiple blocks which should be open for fractional ownership i think once you introduce fractional ownership uh, where ticket sizes comes down significantly and broadly you have built that trust i think a commodity or some kind of commodity can be created out of it so clearly uh, the innovation in terms of uh, uh, how can you really come out with an innovative product pricing strategy is i think uh, defining or creating a new product segment also is important. Okay, okay. Uh, now we open to live uh, questions that we are getting. First, uh, I will direct this to Amit. Uh, which segment of property in non-metro cities will have more attraction going forward? Uh, must consider you must consider the salary reductions that are happening in all companies and the economic uh, uh, situation also. I think properties which are close to the CBDs. So uh, people would want to travel less, uh, you know, use public transport as less as possible. So, 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 so by more segment, demand I think, will be. By segment, I think they mean the affordable mid or the luxury segment. So that would, of course, be, you know, mid segment. Mm-hmm. More in the mid segment. 
okay okay uh, govind i will ask this to you uh, second is uh, do you think primary market research enabled with technology can help make a more democratic real estate product which is more marketable so what mm -hmm. i think uh, please yeah absolutely ankit i believe already uh, see in 2016 when demonetization came fintech was the one which uh, took the leap and i believe in 2020 proptech would be the one which would be taking a leap the reason is a lot of time is still 80 90 percent of the developers are making their product decisions based on their guts right there are many uh, proptech companies which are doing amazing job into this particular space where they're providing all the data backing for you to make informed decision and plan your inventories accordingly uh, for, uh, plan your products accordingly so definitely in terms of the insights of where the customers are coming from, what are the exact TGs are you really talking about? What is the supply and demand gap? You know, these softwares which are available and people who are gathering and digitizing the government data of registration in the most formidable way, uh, these platforms have to be utilized over a period of time. Every developer will have to subscribe for it and will make will have to make decision based on these data. Now, reading this data also is going to be a big task. So every developer will should have some kind of a third party agency or in-house team who can really interpret this data in the best form possible to help them gauze onto the fact that what is the real demand? What is the real demand for a size? There was one of the WhatsApp that was going on coming from one of the reputed developer from Bangalore where they have done a small survey where they've said that, you know, all the threshold, uh, you know, fence seaters, home buyers now are suddenly looking for homes which are 550 square feet or 100 square feet bigger. So uh, I, I always used to communicate in Bombay with all the developers. So 800 square feet and 750 square feet yeah, were the thing of the past for a 2 BHK. The new in was 600 and 650. If your home is 700 and above, it's a very difficult task in 2 BHK to find the real TG for you, right? Because of, because of the ticket size, you know, there's less traction. Digitally, it's difficult to sell as well beyond a point because you have to put a lot of defense. But suddenly after this, the new thing is going to be probably uh, the 700 and your, 750 square feet homes back into the market right so these are the decisions that everyone will have to take uh, you know with a proper data backing and then go about planning any new project going forward okay okay last question unfortunately we are running out of time pradeep very uh, quickly uh, about the uh, clarity on home loan disbursement so if uh, if someone wants to buy property or someone already has uh, bought property and home loan is being dispersed is there any clarity from bank institutions of how they are going to disburse the loans in such situations is there anything that uh, you are looking at i think so jo abhi tak home loan jo hfc ka jo bhi response raha hai wo bahut acha raha hai kafi supportive raha hai ek jo practicality mein agar physically aap wahan nahi ja pa sakte hain to mail ke through jitna bhi support de sakte hain yani particular agar main apni company ki baat karu to mujhe expected nahi tha ki itna zyada support milega इवन दो एच एफ सी में जितना भी हमारा पोर्टफोलियो था उसका उन्होंने फिफ्टी परसेंट डिस्बर्स किया है ऑन मेल्स ऑन जो भी उनकी अप्रूवल से मुझे लगता है आने वाले टाइम में जो एच एफ सी का है क्योंकि जो होम लोन रेट्स हैं वो अपने लास्ट टेन ईयर्स के लो पर चल रहे हैं तो ये अपॉर्चुनिटी भी है उन लोगों के लिए जो अपने लिए घर खरीदना चाहते हैं और होम लोन कंपनीज के लिए भी एक बहुत बड़ा बिजनेस है तो ये वैसे वर्षा एक दोनों चीजें साथ साथ चल रही है तो मुझे लगता है ये अपॉर्चुनिटी भी है और अगर हम बात करें कि आज की डेट में कोई दिक्कत तो मुझे नहीं लग रहा मैं ऐसी कोई ट्रबल फेस नहीं कर पा रहा हूं सब्जेक्ट टू अगर कोई अदर देन डेवलपर कर रहा है तो आई डोंट नो लेकिन मैं नहीं कर पा रहा ओके 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 ग्रेट 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 थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर जॉइनिंग अस अनफॉर्चुनेटली हैव वी हैव रन आउट ऑफ टाइम दिस हैज बीन वेरी इंसाइटफुल द ऑल 3 आवर्स ऑल 3 3 पैनल्स ऑफ 16 speakers it has been very uh, insightful and engaging for us i would also like to thank all our viewers for participating in our et reality digital marketing value forum virtual forum 2020 uh, do reach out, reach out to us on twitter and follow et reality for latest news views and updates related to real estate industry thank you thank you for joining us stay safe thank you for having us thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.